It's good to see you again, traveller. We resume our tale in the desecrated cathedral within the sunless citadel on Greyhawk. The body of Dern the Dominator lies, beaten and destroyed by Korak, with ease. The glowing light emanating from Gerges' warhammer revealing to us the true extent of the detritus within the room. Somewhere within it, the goblin queen, Grinlag, and her pet rat were hiding. Tethlas, reunited and relatively unscathed with us once again, along with Meepo, Erky and assorted kobolds, the common goblins fleeing after seeing their dictator so quickly dispatched. Tethlis, dressed only in his underwear, having had his armour and weapons taken from him, was glistening in the light. Both Elrahir and I, the half-elves, couldn't help checking him out. Tethlis searched down for anything more, and found a second key, this one definitely not goblin made, and a signet ring displaying the Oakhurst crest, the same crest on the armour worn by Dern, sundered by Korak. Grinlag shouted out from within the pile of goblin, treasure. Take this parting gift, human witch, flinging a satchel in my direction. I sent my mage hand to gently prod it, whilst replying that I wasn't actually human, nor a witch, and it would be lovely to know the name of her pet rat, and it had been wonderful to meet her. Elrahir reluctantly tore his eyes away from Tethlis and looked towards where the voice came from. He spotted a female goblin form, but couldn't be sure if it was Grinlag or one of the other hags which had previously attacked us. He could have sworn, though, he saw Sony Discman in the pile, and one of the very first edition Game Boys, you know the ones, the size of a brick, black and white. Korak shouted back that he wasn't done, he wanted his dagger returned. Realising that the armour worn by Dern was too damaged to be of any use, Tethlis made his way to the badly injured goblin, whom Erky had smashed previously. To put it out of its misery, he said, Say hi to Dern for me, as he pressed his short sword through the goblin's throat. Gurgus made his way to Erky to see if he needed any healing, but Erky had already taken care of that himself. As I used Mage Hand to draw the bag closer to me, I felt a warm glow spread over me as Erky cast sanctuary on me. The bag looked like a well-made leather satchel with a strap on it and an abstract motif on the flap, but covered in grime. If only I knew how to cast prestidigitation. As I picked up the bag, it felt heavy, but upon opening it, it appeared much larger than it should be. Just a typical woman's handbag then. Grimlag yelled again at us to be gone and we felt a tremor beneath our feet. Elra here, being a ranger, used his skills with animal handling to try to coax the pet rat out using a ration as bait. It seemed to work a little too well, as a scabby, rabid-looking giant rat came charging out straight at him, followed by another two. I fired off an arrow and shot the first rat straight up the bum coming out through the mouth. I'm classy like that. I was able to shoot off a second arrow and dispatch the rat that had affixed itself to Elrahir's neck, doing nine points of damage. The third rat decided to flee, Elrahir swiping at it but missing with a natural one, slamming his short sword into the uneven ground and breaking it. It wouldn't have been quite so bad had the real Elra here actually been present rather than me influencing his character. <laughs> Screeching was coming from the pile of junk and as the rat fled, Elra here, having seen my first kill, launched an arrow straight up the bum of the fleeing rat, splitting it in two. 
The kobolds were beginning to go to town on the remaining goblins, so Tethlis began scavenging the corpses of the hobgoblins to try to at least find some boots, armour and weapons, managing to avoid stepping in any further bear traps in the process. At this point, a loud screech echoed through the chamber, coming from the end of the Dragon Haze Hall where we had determined that Calcrix, the white dragon wormling, was imprisoned. There was a blast of cold wind and the sound of shattering glass. I shook the bag out, but it was empty. I'd been hoping to find Tethlis's armour in it. I shouldered it, although it wasn't quite the mulberry bag I'd been hoping for, and went to peek through the door into the hallway. I saw Meepo, covered in ice, staggering away from the frozen door, falling to his knees. Ice had formed a lair upon some of the floor. I called out that I thought we may have to fight a dragon, and made my way into the hall, trying to use the pillars for cover. Gurgus followed me and Korak moved towards us, but didn't enter the Dragon Haze Hall. He wanted to ensure everyone made it safely through first. Elrahir also came towards the door, reclaiming his short sword from Tethlis as he passed. Erki healed him, and Tethlis and Korak followed, Tethlis now wielding Dern's broadsword. Gurgus was the first to see Calcrix emerge from the doorway, enraged and attacking the kobolds within range. It clawed down Meepo's back, blood spraying as Calcrix turned towards Gurgus. Seeing this, I stepped out and cast dissonant whispers, singing a discordant melody. You'd better grab a d20 and roll a wisdom saving throw with a DC of 13, or you're about to take 11 points of psychic damage. My granny went down to the cellar to see where the gas leak might be. She struck up a match to see better. Oh, bring back my granny to me. Calcrix failed to save and was forced to run as far away from me as possible, retreating back into the room from whence he came. Gurgus ran up to the door, intending to shut it. He could see within the bodies of three frozen kobolds lying there. It was a large room curving to the left, with heads mounted on the walls like trophies. Elrahir rushed up, ready to lend aid if required. Tethlis, with boots and a sword and some very tight underpants dashed through and behind me. I tried very hard not to think about the fact that a semi-naked golden glistening wood elf was standing right behind me, or at least I thought he was, but damn that mask of the wild. Korak joined us, another piercing roar from Calcrix filling the air as Gurgus slammed the door shut. And here we wait, unsure what our next move will be. But at least I've got a lovely new bag. Now I just need to get some matching shoes. <laughs>